welcome to the ITU Plenipotentiary Conference 2018 in Dubai in the United Arab Emirates, where I'm very pleased to be joined in the studio today by Mr. Siabonga Kwele, who is the Minister of Telecommunications and Postal Services for the Republic of South Africa. Minister, welcome to the studio. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for welcoming us. So I'd like to start off by talking to you a little bit about the fact that there's considerable attention being placed on harnessing the power of information and communication technologies and ICTs as an enabler for good, for development, for the benefit of people, for families, communities and nations. And I wanted to ask you, what is your personal perspective on this? We, we as a country, we really embrace that because we come from developing nation. We are seeing the power of these new technologies and ICT in particular being crucial for us to deliver services to, to our people in a smarter way, in a faster way, in an interactive way. We are also, as developing nation, seeing this as part of the WISI agenda, which we have been part of, to make sure that uh, this power of ICTs, they cut across every aspect of life, every aspect of uh, government, every aspect of business. We need to adopt them in order to leapfrog our people to development. Coming from Africa, we are really, every, every state and South Africa and government, we are adopting these new technologies as a mechanism to make us uh, leapfrog in terms of development to be on par with the rest of the developed world. Now, in terms of uh, sustainable development, the plen this Planning Potential Conference is the first since the world agreed on the Sustainable Development Goals in 2015. I wanted to ask you, perhaps you could give us a few examples of how ICTs are helping to drive sustainable development in your country. Uh, they are very critical. Uh, we, are, we have an honour that through the ITU, SGU, I'm now serving in the UN Broadband Council for Sustainable Development. But as a country, we are looking at these things to help us to deal with the critical challenges we face as a nation. If you look at the, the key priority of South Africa is education. We are digitizing education content. content. Uh, it also helps with access to education whether it's online education which we are busy rolling out, particularly for the workers to upgrade their skills, whether it's it in basic education or higher education, because education is such a high priority. And that's why, for instance, in South Africa, we have connected all our universities to high broadband connectivity as a link of all higher education institutions. I was just putting the education example. Health is quite critical in terms of uh, people because people move but they go to different health facilities but in addition the the new technologies assist us to have specialist care where there are no specialists just by deploying the connectivity and these technologies to remote hospital and remote clinic uh, we see that it's going to help us as a country in South Africa to develop the, to 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 ensure that we, every citizen has got access to quality health care. So, so those are some of the practical examples. Uh, we are a mining uh, 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 country, and uh, the new technologies are helping us to reduce the accidents which are caused by mining uh, using artificial intelligence. So those are some of the things which I think are positive, and we are adopting them. Uh, in agriculture, for instance, we, in terms of improving agricultural yield and uh, making sure that people have got access to markets and e-commerce. So those are the things we are really developing in our, in our country to ensure that our citizens actually participate and see the benefit of these new technologies which are emerging. I just wanted to ask you about half the world's people are connected to the internet, the other half is not. What is uh, the Republic of South Africa doing to get everyone connected? Uh, it is very important to bridge the digital divide. Uh, uh, developing countries like South Africa, they were not so much beneficial in the first, second, and even the third revolution. And we see we are preparing our nation, our workers, and our people to participate in this new emerging revolution. In terms of uh, the things we're actually doing at this moment, 
Uh, last year, we adopted uh, the Internet for All initiative, which is very critical in ensuring that we have got innovative mechanism to ensure that everyone is connected. We have got 22 million South Africans who were not connected to Internet then. And we're starting now to feel the impact of this because it's a multi-stakeholder forum where business, community and government are working together to find innovative ways to deal first with the issues of infrastructure in the difficult areas because urban areas are connected. Now we're left the, the almost half a billion of the world population are, are those who are difficult to connect. So we're looking at innovative ways. We're working with satellite companies, telcos, uh, we're working with OTTs to really find innovative ways to, to deploy infrastructure, affordable infrastructure to those areas. What has come up quite clearly, once you may, if you make your internet affordable or infrastructure affordable, uh, particularly startups, uh, just uh, this week, uh, I was launching one company, the startup, uh, they are not just doing trial, they happen to have spectrum, which is like what would be 5G spectrum. It's called Ray. It's a small startup, but it's quite disruptive because they are giving this high speed internet in townships, in cities, and in rural areas at a 4G level cost. So, those are the things people are supporting SMEs is going to be key. But that internet for all project has got skills element. Because what we have found is not just on the <clears throat> supply side, but the demand side measures are quite critical because we can have infrastructure, but people may not use it because of cost, particularly cost of, de of devices, skills, and the, the content. The relevant content is becoming more critical because if you use uh, things like language, uh, use people, things they can relate to, even if they've, they are not rich, but they'll pay for it because it's beneficial to them. So that, that Internet for All project uh, will be giving the first report uh, in January to World Economic Forum. But uh, the other initiatives to make sure that we not leave anyone behind is, uh, like I said, the massification of skills. Uh, we have our own training agencies not formal skills going to sit at a university or in a classroom, uh, even part-time courses, just to make sure that the SMMEs can use this, the workers can feel comfortable in using technologies. Those are things which uh, we're working with uh, domestic companies and international companies and our own NGOs to massify the skills, the digital skills elements so that people can find comfort in using the internet. So that's why, for instance, we, <clears throat> we, we have been pushing the issues of uh, ensuring comfort, security, that people feel secure in the use of internet. Those are the things we've been pushing here uh, at, the, at the ITU and other multilateral forums to ensure that citizens, even if from developing countries like South Africa, they must feel comfortable in the use of internet because internet is a very empowering. So those are some of the initiatives we are doing as a country. Uh, of course, the ITU has been helping us. I'm very grateful to the ITU in terms of capacity building. Uh, I'm very happy that we are working with them now as an outcome of uh, the Devon uh, World Telecom, that we are building this African Center for Digital Transformation. Uh, in South Africa, in Pretoria, uh, to really help with uh, this multi-stakeholder approach in terms of policy development, in terms of assisting our SMEs with testing and conformance and standard testing, in terms of uh, helping them to innovate and bring venture capitalists to assist them to commercialize. So we are very happy that we are working very closely with the ITU to to, to empower people of Africa. So we're saying we, are, we, we have to reduce this gender divide. Uh, it is a very important principle because 
as a country, also come from a history of apartheid. And we know what a divide can do, because the apartheid system was a system of dividing the people. So our constitution doesn't allow it. And that's why we're working, starting with the girl child, empower young, young people, young entrepreneurs uh, to participate. Our policies as government, uh, we are required to demonstrate that you, uh, as a company, if you do business with government, to encourage them. We have got also women, we have got youth, uh, either empowering them or in terms of enterprise development. Those are very positive things uh, which we have to close quite fast uh, if we are to have uh, uh, everyone participating in the digital economy for the future. Finally, I'd like to extend to you the opportunity to pass a message on, not just to participants here, but also to our, our wider audience as well. Now, firstly, we will say uh, we're very grateful. Let me first congratulate the elected officials uh, of the ITU. We have got full confidence in them that they'll be able to take this organization to play its, many, its uh, historical and deep new role in terms of uh, ensuring that we reach our sustainable development goals by 2030 using ICT. Secondly, we are quite happy with the outcome. Of course, when you are coming to negotiate, you can't get everything. But in terms of uh, key areas of uh, developing countries, I think uh, our teams have negotiated in good faith with other uh, uh, participants and who have achieved in terms of gender issues, in terms of developmental issues, in terms of training and capacity building, in terms of protection of uh, young people and children. So those are some of the things we are quite happy about that the ITU will continue to play this role and really we hope that they can increase their role in developing countries like Africa, a continent like Africa, to help us to come out of poverty. Because at the end of the day, what we are facing in Africa is an issue of unemployment. If you can educate our youth, train them to participate, it will have a huge impact on poverty we are seeing as a continent. It will have a huge impact in terms of development and prosperity of, of our continent. Those are some of the things in terms of outcome. We'll continue to support the, the, the ITU. Uh, we are grateful for, to those uh, nations and countries who help us to come back to the council and elected to the council and the Red Recruiting Board. And we really commit as a country that we'll do our best to make sure that we have a positive contribution for the development of humanity. Thank you. Minister, thank you very much for joining us in the studio today and taking the time to be here. And we look forward to catching up with you again in the future too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.